Hello and welcome to We Wander. Thanks for joining us today as we take a little trip down to the San Juan Mountains. This area in southwest Colorado is one of the most beautiful in the country, at least in our opinion. In fact, 30 plus years ago, when we used to live in Phoenix, Arizona, we'd come up here in the summertime to escape the heat, to enjoy mountain film, 4th of July, and getting up into the high peaks. Having lived in Florida for the last 20 plus years, this was a little bit of a homecoming for us. And this time we brought our daughter to show her the area that we came to love so long ago. is a winding road No telling where it goes Driving through days and nights Won't stop for traffic lights And I I really wanna know, really wanna know If I Will ever figure out where the road goes From falling down, I will keep on searching for my highs. You can say I lost my mind, I will keep on holding my head high. Even if the sky is falling down. Jumping from cliffs so high Trusting our wings to fly Sometimes we're crashing down But we get up and start from the ground I will keep on searching for my highs You can say I lost my mind I will keep on holding my head high Even if the sky is falling down So this is Twin Falls Up into Yankee Boy Basin above Uray It is one of the most beautiful places out there and it's called Twin Falls. Actually, I'm not entirely sure. You can take your choice. There's either a fall up there that splits into two side by side, which that's probably why it's called Twin Falls, or there's also two falls in a row. Maybe it should be triplet falls. Who knows? <laughs> Main thing is to uh, enjoy it here. Beautiful, uh, especially with um some of the changing colors up on the mountain side, but also then you still have some of the wildflowers down there by the creek, it's really beautiful. Heading into Upper Yankee Boy Basin, the road gets a little bit rougher, a little bit narrower, and high clearance is highly recommended. It helps to have some skill and some experience in traveling these steep Colorado shelf roads. We came across this Jeep precariously perched off the side of the road. It looked like I could go up and push it and it would tumble down the hill and it wouldn't be a good ending. Fortunately there was nobody inside and everybody seems to have gotten out okay. But it just emphasizes the point, don't come up here unless you're ready for it. A little past the Jeep, we decided to pull over and do some hiking. There's a nice little trail that spurs off the road and gets you away from some of the traffic so you can enjoy the quiet, the sound of the river, and just take in the mountains around you.
Lieutenant DeRay, a local crew had showed up to try to recover the Jeep. They were blocking the road, so we just took our time, sat back, and watched the activity. In the end, they decided they had to reposition. When they did that, we were able to get by and head on back into town for the night. forget to stop by for an enjoyable time at the hot spring. It's a great way to spend an evening and wind down from your day. The next day, we left Uray and headed across the Million Dollar Highway towards Silverton. In many ways, this highway scares me a lot more than the road up to Yankee Boy Basin. The drop-offs are steep, there's no guardrails, and in this case you're driving at highway speeds and dealing with a lot of other traffic. It's an easy road to drive, but still not for the faint of heart. The views are beautiful, and it's interesting to check out all the debris from the winter avalanches. But for the driver, you have to keep your eyes on the road. This gives you a good excuse to take it slow, pull over once in a while, and enjoy all of the changing colors as fall approaches. We were fortunate to pass through Silverton right as the train was leaving. It arrives in the morning, drops off tourists who get to enjoy the town, and then leaves in the afternoon. As a mechanical engineer, it's always fascinating to me to see what they were able to accomplish by just burning some wood or coal and generating steam. spot to check out. Get back in here. About 20 feet or so. I can see about another 20 feet. It gets really small and makes a corner. So, yeah, just fun to check out. I'm not going to go back in there today, that's for sure. Private property probably as well. But, uh, beautiful, beautiful little gully here. Lots of broken trees. I can imagine the power. Maybe I can't imagine the power of it. Went into tearing these things down and ripping them down this valley and breaking them into twigs to get them this far. Pretty impressive little spot. And pretty easy to get to, really. You can drive up here in a Prius probably if you wanted to. But we're going to continue on. We're heading up to Animus Forks and we're going to check out some of that area.
we just had a really nice trip up here to Animus Forks. This is a really cool spot here nestled amongst the valley. It's the confluence of a number of trails in the Uray Silverton area. And you'll see a lot of Jeeps, motorcycles, ATVs here. And it's a really neat spot to stop here at the ghost town. We enjoyed our trip up. We took the easiest way up from Silverton. Uh, less, less bumping around, you could get a two-wheel drive up here. Uh, high clearance is nice and uh, four-wheel drive definitely not necessary at least this time of year. Went through a really cool big snow bank but it was all clear. No issues there. So let's go explore Animus Forks. cool to see all of the ghost towns and the buildings some historical information and it was quite a place it's a mere shadow of what it was but originally the mine was up this valley back up here and there was a 12,000 foot that's like two and a half miles if I've done my math right or getting up to that direction tram that brought the ore down by cars and then processed it here at a big facility that there's just some foundations left but there were three or four large buildings with the stamp mill and all of the chemical processing they did to get down to the ore gold in this case and then up here is the main town and i think probably you can see there's some remnants some wooden remnants up here that were the original stamp mill that then was expanded upon with all of these concrete structures and numerous homes up on the hill and in and around this area. cool spot this large tram building here and if you look across the valley probably can't see it in this video but you can see the upper section of the tram over here and uh, the towers where it used to bring the ore down across and uh, you can see some ore funnels up here they would drop into that and into the carts underneath to be taken off probably down the hill for processing. Yeah, and then, you know, this is still an active roadway up here. A lot of people come up here. It's a big tourist route of the area every summer. So they're always maintaining the roads and the drainage up here. So while it's an off-road adventure, uh, it's a little sanitized, which I'm real happy about. <laughs> nice to get up here without any major problems on a day like today.
passing back through Silverton again, we were on our way to Telluride. We made a quick stop to grab a bite to eat, a couple of beers, and then we headed on our way. There's a few ways to get from Silverton over to Telluride. The paved roads take several hours. But if you have high clearance and four-wheel drive, I highly recommend taking over pass. This gets you right above the tree line, and the views are spectacular. And although the going's rough and a bit slow, it can shave quite a bit of time off of going around. Like other roads in Colorado, this is not for the faint of heart. And if you're afraid of heights, probably best to stick to the paved roads. It was our last night visiting Southwest Colorado. We'd had a chance to show our daughters some of our favorite old haunts. We finished up in the ski town of Telluride and decided to take a gondola ride up to the mountain village. This is a gondola that didn't exist back in the 1980s when we visited here. In fact, the mountain village was just a mere shadow of what it is today. They say you can never go back, and Telluride certainly isn't the sleepy mountain town that it was back when we visited the first time. We decided to enjoy it for what it is today, which for us meant a beautiful sunset gondola ride up to the top of the mountain. Cheers, everybody. Well, we've had a good time up here in Uray. Done some really fun exploring. And uh, had to take one last little stop. We're on our way home today, but one real easy stop to make here is to check out the Cascade Falls. We had a great time rediscovering the San Juan Mountains reliving some old memories, and making some new ones. You can bet it won't be 20 years before we come back here again. Thanks for tuning in, and we're hoping you have some time to get out and wander.